when you look in the story, uh, you'll, you, you let, we'll go back. And now, I'm not going to keep putting the Bible passage on the screen. Hopefully, you've got your Bible or, or your memory's working. Um, noting from the text that Joseph was of the house and line of David, which made Bethlehem his ancestral home. Um, uh, I, I live in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, I was born in Champaign, Illinois. Uh, but my, my parents both came from Burlington, Iowa. Now, there's not many left in Burlington, but that's sort of, for me, that's, that's the, the ancestral home that I have. For me, that's, that's sort of it. You probably have a city or at least a, an area, maybe, a, maybe you weren't quite in a little city or a little town in the country, but there's an area that you would consider your ancestral home. It's, it's possible some of you hardly have any place to, because of your, your, your growing up, dad was in the military or whatever, um, or every time the neighbors got to know you, you had to move, whatever. And so uh, you may not really feel like there's any place, much place for home for you. But in the Bible world, an ancestral home was really important. And Joseph's family was from there. In fact, if things had continued as they should have, Joseph was the son of David, and Joseph had the right, he had the legal right to be sitting on the throne of Israel. In fact, if things had gone the way it continued as they were, he would have been on the throne in Jerusalem, not Herod. But stuff didn't work out. And that was the deal. So he's living up in Nazareth. The census calls him to go back to his ancestral home for the, for, to be numbered and to be taxed. And so he goes to his ancestral home, uh, the, the city of Bethlehem. And it was called, in the story, it was called the city of David. All right. The second thing in the story we want to notice is the mention of the manger, uh, fatna in, in, in Greek. That's the Greek New Testament word. And it's mentioned three times in the story. And um, I want to suggest to you, based on archaeology, based on culture, and actually based on what the text does and doesn't say, that you might as well get comfortable with the fact that mangers archaeologically are regularly found and culturally in that part of the world even today uh, as part of a typical house, typical domestic structure on the ground floor. And so I want to suggest to you that the manger in the story was not in a barn on the South 40. And that's why no barn was mentioned because it wasn't in a barn like we might think of one in our cultural upbringing, but it was in part of the house complex. And, and we'll, we'll talk about just how that might have uh, worked out in just a minute. Then the third thing I, we want to look at in the text is the mention of the inn. So, so we, got, we got the ancestral home in Bethlehem for Joseph, We've got a manger which archaeologically, culturally, and even based on what the text does and doesn't say, it should have been on the ground floor of a typical house of their time. Uh, then the inn. There, they, she laid him in a manger on the ground floor because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, there's no innkeeper, no quote from the innkeeper, just a mention of a manger and an inn. Well, I want to suggest to you that the manger was not at a barn on the South 40, but the manger was on the ground floor of a house. I'll bet you it was a house of Joseph's family still living in, in Nazareth, in Bethlehem. Joseph goes back to his ancestral home, there is still family there, and they would willingly receive them into their house, I'll bet. Now, that's not the way we're used to the story, but I'm going to try to just wrestle with you. What does the Bible say, and what doesn't it say? 
And then, well, what does that mean? And then how do we apply it? So the fact is, there's no mention of a barn, uh, no, no mention of the assorted barnyard animals, uh, no mention of an, of an innkeeper, no quote from the innkeeper. And I'm going to suggest that the inn was not a hotel like you and I are used to thinking. In fact, the, the word is kataluma. That's, that's Greek. Kata means to uh, uh, down, down, down. Uh, luma comes from the, the, the Greek New Testament word luo, to, to, to loose something. So a cataluma is where you, you, you take whatever it is you're carrying and you loosen it off and you put it down to be able to stop and rest. Cataluma. The, um, uh, and I want to suggest to you that the cataluma was probably, well, typically it was found on the upper floor of a, of a typical house and so I'm going to suggest to you that the Christmas story actually tells us Mary and Joseph went to Joseph's ancestral home in Bethlehem. And when they got there, the second floor or the upper floor, Cataluma, was full. And so they stayed downstairs on the ground floor in the domestic stable as part of the house of Joseph's family. And you say, that's heresy. <laughs> we will throw you out in the yard and we won't stone you, but we'll run you over with our cars. Um, you can't talk like that in church. Well, let's, let's, let's wrestle with that just, just a little bit. Um, the word cataluma, that word, Luke 2, 7, no room in the cataluma, the end. That word is used twice in the New Testament. It's used in Luke 2, 7, and it's also used in this passage we are right now, also by Luke. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a parallel passage to this. It's Mark 14, 14. So, so the same, same story and the same word is used in Mark 14, 14. But Luke uses that word twice. Luke 2, 7 and Luke 22, 11 and 12. Now, where are we in the story in Luke 22, verse 11 and 12? Where are we? Where is it? What's up? Huh? It's, it's the Passover, uh, the Last Supper deal. And when is this? It's, it's it, you know, the upper room story. You know, this, this one, Jesus is going to die. This is his Passion Week. And what city are we in? Jerusalem. Now, I just got done talking to you about a Cataluma in Bethlehem at the beginning of Jesus' life. And now I'm going to talk to you about a Cataluma in Jerusalem, six miles away, at the end of Jesus' life. I'll be honest, and I, 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 I'm not a, I don't have any great insights, but I just have a funny feeling that that had meaning to Luke. That that Jesus was not allowed into the Cataluma at the beginning of his life, but at the end of his life, in fact, he, he ended his life. The last event prior to his crucifixion was, in fact, in a Cataluma in, in Jerusalem. Well, be that as it may, uh, there's the passage where it's mentioned. Which, which word, which phrase... In, the, in this passage, in the English, which is an English translation, what is an English translation of the Greek word kataluma? Guest room. Guest room. Luke 22, 11, the word guest room, or the, the compound word there, guest room is actually the Greek New Testament word for kataluma. So Jesus said to Peter and John, you go to the house, Follow this guy, follow the guy who's carrying the water jar, which would be unusual because that wasn't stuff men did. And so they followed him to the house. Now, I don't know if that was a prearranged signal or Jesus just knew. It could have gone either way. But he said, follow that guy to that house. When you go to the house, ask for the owner. 
and tell the owner of the house, ask the owner of the house uh, where the cataluma is that I, Jesus, can eat the Passover with my disciples. And Jesus said, the man will show you, you ask for the cataluma and the guest room, and he will show you a large upper room, all furnished, and that's where you make preparations. So the Cataluma, the guest room of the story at the end of Jesus' life was an upper floor room uh, in, a, in a domestic house, typical house uh, in Jerusalem. I would suggest to you that that is what the inn, Cataluma, was also in the Bethlehem story. So... If I'm right, Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem. They went to David's ancestral, uh, excuse me, Joseph's ancestral home in the family of David. And they stayed on the ground floor and she actually gave birth in the domestic stables there, part of the house complex, because the Cataluma, the guest room on the second floor was already filled already filled with family members who also come in for the census. Uh, maybe also filled with, uh, uh, may maybe a lot of the folks that were up there were older family members, uh, unlike our society. In their society, they honored the older members of the family and respected them. And so maybe it would be that, that you'd never think of moving the older, respected, honored ones for the younger ones, even though she was going to give birth. And or maybe Mary said, I'd like a little space. <laughs> Could we stay down here? I don't know. All we know is the guest room, the Cataluma was full. And Mary gave birth, whatever her motivation, she gave birth on the domestic stables, on the ground floor, I believe, of the same house. 